Good day. This is the Judged Mormon. My name is Paul, the host of the show, and this podcast is for anybody and everybody who has ever been judged for anything because they're not perfect. Now, I call it the Judged Mormon because I myself have been am Mormon and I've been judged because I'm not perfect. So, I decided to start this podcast. I also have a blog at thejudgedmormon.com and an email, thejudgedmormon at gmail.com that will come to me personally if you ever want to reach out. I want to read a letter to you, and it's this letter that inspired me to start this blog that I'll be doing as well as this podcast. So let me read this letter. Um, I'll just read it verbatim that I've got here in front of me. In my 30s, and having been born into Mormonism and an active member of the Mormon Church my entire life, I did believe 100% that the Mormon Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was the only true church in the world. What changed? Well, let's call it the day of the internet has been here and many, many things are now available. Growing up, I would go to church and always hear the same topics. Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. Pay your tithing. Pray to God every morning and night. Read your scriptures daily. Repent, and families can be together forever. I don't write this letter to trash talk religion or the Mormon church. In fact, I like religion. I like the principles and values religion brings to one's life, including the Mormon religion. And in all fairness, I believe many people in the Mormon church probably don't know most of what I have discovered through research on the many different topics I have learned more about. My Mormon upbringing was good. I grew up in a family that taught good family values, respect everyone, be frugal, and take care of those in need. I went on to serve a Mormon mission in Europe. It was a great experience I had. It was during my Mormon mission that I began to question and look into the different teachings of the Mormon church. I would be asked questions that I didn't truly know the answer to. Many questions regarding polygamy in the early years of the church, and a couple of times I was asked why African Americans were not allowed to hold the priesthood in the Mormon church until the 70s or 80s. I knew very vague answers that I was taught, and I knew these answers were no longer enough. My time in Europe is when my studies began. I was in my early 20s. I heard over and over during my years that the Mormon church is Christ's church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and it cannot change because God and Jesus Christ are perfect, and they would not allow their church to become corrupt or change. I was constantly taught that God and Jesus Christ speak to the Mormon prophets, and that's why the Mormon church is perfect, because the prophets are God's mouthpiece on earth, and we are to believe and follow everything the Mormon prophet says due to the revelation he receives from God. This is not necessarily something unique to Mormonism. I mean, many churches have heads that lead and say they receive inspiration from God. Now, I will not say these men are liars. I have heard many preachers speak, and they share great wholesome messages that I agree with and feel are true. But I have to question the Mormon prophets' words when they begin to contradict or even change what past prophets of the Mormon church have said. One such preacher I used to listen to on TV as I would prepare to get myself ready for church, a Mormon church, I would listen to Joel Olstein on TV. I would listen to this man speak and preach, and I never heard him say anything that was contrary to my own beliefs or what I was taught in my Mormon church. Who am I to say that this man is not inspired by God to preach a beautiful message to all who will listen? Many different preachers from many religions teach and preach a beautiful message. I cannot say only Mormon leaders are inspired by God. I believe all seeking God and religion in their life will find good in messages being preached by all of the different religions. Do I believe Mormon leaders to be inspired by God? Only sometimes. I am writing this letter because I have learned information during the past few years that have made me question what Mormons believe, and if the Mormon church is the only one true church on earth that is guided by Jesus Christ. If this was true, then anything perfect does not change. Anything perfect will always show the love of God toward everyone, regardless of nationality, skin color, or sex. In recent years, 
I have discovered words from early church leaders that did not speak of love for everyone. I have found some basic church principles and teachings have changed. With my research, I began to ask more questions, which led to more research and more questions, etc. I can tell you that I still attend Mormon Church on Sundays when I'm able to attend. I participate in different church callings asked of me. Not all of them. I have no problem saying no. I continue going to the Mormon Church because I like the values and teachings of God's love that is shared each week. I will not say I believe Joseph Smith was the prophet of God. I will say he was the first prophet of the Mormon Church, but to me that does not mean he was called of God or that he even spoke with God. Let me compare this. I believe the Pope for the Catholic Church is the head of Catholicism. Whether you call someone a prophet, a pope, a rabbi, etc., I look at these titles all the same. They are titles of religious leaders. Individuals can take the title and believe what they want. If someone wants to believe that a specific title means that person speaks to God or receives inspiration for the world, then that is their belief. I believe Joseph Smith was a prophet of the Mormon Church because that's the title he carried. I do not believe the title automatically means he spoke with God and Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ has directed the Mormon Church through man on earth. I will not say Joseph Smith or any prophet of the Mormon Church was called of God to lead it. I believe men on earth place each other in these positions. It would be fantastic if there was a true church guided by Jesus, but I'm not convinced of this yet. Now, before I came to my own realization that I didn't know if I believed the Mormon Church to be the only true church on earth, I was already not following Mormon teachings 100%. The Mormon teaching about the Word of Wisdom says not to drink coffee. Well, guess what? I'm one of the biggest patrons of Starbucks that exists on the planet. In the eyes of Mormons, I am a sinner. And because I am a sinner, I cannot go to heaven and live with God in the afterlife. That is when I began to be judged. I first hid the fact I was drinking espresso drinks, but then I realized, who cares? If a fellow Mormon wants to judge me as a sinner, I don't care. After all, Mormons aren't supposed to judge anyone. Well, I can tell you that there are plenty of Mormons that have judged me and looked at me as a bad person because I drink coffee. I can tell you that I have been shunned by this act of not following the word of wisdom. I've been judged by Mormons when they have seen me not wearing the temple garment. It's easy to spot because I don't have the white undershirt or the boxer brief style underwear line that would rest just above the kneecap. Mormons are taught to love and not judge. Many Mormons have not judged me or cared about my coffee or my asking questions about the religion. But there have been Mormons who have judged me and caused friendships to fall away. I've also been around many Mormons who talk behind others' backs and gossip like crazy. My experience is that a lot of Mormons will always talk about what someone else is doing that is wrong according to the Mormon Church. But they will not talk about what they do that is contrary to the Mormon Church teachings. One last thing I would like to say is I have friends from many faiths, backgrounds, nationalities. I have straight friends, gay friends, black friends, Hispanic friends, Asian friends, Muslim friends, etc. I will tell everyone to follow the religion that will help you be a good person. I don't care if you follow an organized religion or you are the type of person who is spiritual in your own way. We are all individuals. Let's be good to each other. There are good people from all religions and faiths. That's the end of the letter. So reading my friend's letter, I realized that I relate to him in the sense that I have done a lot of research myself and I have scratched my head many times when I read something that is contrary to what I've been taught my entire life and also new things I've read and learned that have left me completely dumbfounded. This encouraged me to blog about my research and also start a podcast where I will be interviewing people that have been judged by individuals in their church. I want to emphasize that I will not be blogging about my research to convince anyone to change their mind or beliefs about the Mormon Church. My intent is also not to offend or do any trash talk on the Mormon Church. I'm sharing my research that has raised some questions 
in my own mind regarding the Mormon Church history and teachings I've been taught throughout my life. I will continue to add to this blog regarding the topics and teachings that began my personal learning and deeper studying of the Mormon faith, and I look forward to hearing from you. Anyone can email me personally at thejudgedmormon at gmail.com. If you have ever been judged for anything or you have a story to share, let me know. Email me and let's talk about being interviewed for my podcast or if you want to have your story shared in my blog, please contact me. I would love to hear it. Just like my friend stated in his letter that he has been judged, I can tell everybody listening I too have been judged during my life because I am not a perfect Mormon and I'm not afraid to ask questions about anything I've learned and possibly even change my mind. Now, I just want to bring up some topics that, you know, maybe get some people thinking. I call these topics the Mormon sins. And the definition I give to Mormon sins is acts that go against Mormon teachings that are not necessarily sins according to other religions. So, in the Mormon religion, pregnancy before marriage, any premarital sexual relations, infidelity, open marriage, any word of wisdom issues, the church tells its members do not drink alcohol, coffee, tea, don't use tobacco or drugs, follow the law. So if you've been arrested, I'd love to hear from you. If you've ever questioned any Mormon teachings, I know that can be a source of contention amongst different members. If you've ever dated a non-Mormon, if you're gay, bisexual, part of the LGBTQ community, if you've ever lived with someone of, of the opposite sex that is not a family member, if you don't wear your garments all the time, if you've looked at pornography or you've got a tattoo, or maybe you just wear some clothes that you like that another Mormon follower thinks is not modest, if you feel you've been judged for anything, please contact me and let's talk about it. I'd love to get you on the show, uh, interview you about you know, how it's made you feel, how it's changed your life, if at all, and whatever feelings you may have towards the church, if that's changed. And if you've got a story you'd like me to share on my blog, please write that to me. Again, the email, thejudgedmormon at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode today. And uh, until next time.